Welcome to Last Set News to get top stories in cryptocurrency assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, that's some pretty great stuff. I mean, first up, everything's going great in the digital asset and cryptocurrency market, and here is more proof. Feeling the heat from employees, Wall Street banks get closer to adopting Bitcoin. And we're going to take a look at a small town hall meeting that was held by hedge fund managers, and the actual vice president of JP Morgan had to get involved. Taking a look at that, also going to move on to the Voyager loyalty program, which was just announced today by CEO Steve Ehrlich. And I'm going to tell you exactly what was said, some things that I found that were fascinating, some things that uh, were just okay. And finally, we're going to take a look at the things that are actually moving Polkadot, such as Pulse, medical records on Polkadot's blockchain, Asclepius, <laughs> Sclepius Network rebrands to Pulse Network. Pretty good rebrand and this head of his view. And what I really want to talk about is not just the nuts and bolts of it, but just to show you that there's a lot of things being built on Polkadot, and it's a pretty good bet. So we'll do all those things, but first let's take a look at what's going on into the market. And today it is, geez, what is it? February 12th, 3 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And uh, uh, it's a pretty great day so far. Uh, hopefully everything goes well for the weekend and we'll see what happens. So this is what we have. Let me blow this up real quick to see what we have going on. So first up, uh, Bitcoin, massive. Uh, it's actually not that massive, you know, one and a half percent, but boy, it's had a great, you know, seven day run. And we're almost going to hit 48,000. The real question is, are we going to be able to hit 50,000 by the weekend? Well, typically, you'll see a little bit of a pullback, Asia markets, whatever you want to say. Uh, but uh, you usually don't see a big, huge run up on the weekend. But uh, who knows, it is cryptocurrency. Uh, Ethereum blasts over 1800 and we're at 1850. So looking pretty good 5% in 24 hour time frame. Because Tether, Cardano, it's down a little bit, but still, it's right below that dollar mark. And to me, like when I when I hear about Cardano almost at a dollar, it's just amazing to me because remember when it was like nothing? It was like eight cents, six cents, thirteen cents, and everyone's like, "Yeah, it's just Cardano. It sucks, and it'll never move." And they're so slow, and they make all these announcements. And well, look where we're at today. So if you held Cardano, congratulations, ah, you're in the money. Polkadot is making some fantastic gains, seventeen percent in twenty four hour time frame, and just to be clear, on this channel, I am biased. And I know a lot of other channels will tell you the exact opposite, but not here. I am biased. And the things that I invest in <laughs> usually cover a heck of a lot more than other things. So when I get excited about certain projects, it's because I'm biased. That's just how it is. Now, it's not like I don't cover other projects, although I don't really do it that much. But uh, if you hear me covering a project and everybody knows my portfolio, you can look at a, a number or a plethora of different videos out there. These are the ones I like to talk about and focus. And that is just me. Change my mind. Tell me about your great project and I'll cover it. Anyhow, Chainlink, 11%, Stellar, 12 6 I mean, everything's up. It's a, it's a great day. Uniswap is up 10% in a day. Unbelievable. 22, almost 23 bucks. Yeah, I like to see all this. Uh, Ave, looking great, looking great. And then going down, because unfortunately we have to, to find my big pick, Voyager token up 42% uh, for 24-hour time frame. And we're looking at 331 or 339. So not too shabby of what is going on. So again, I'm biased and I make no bones about it. That's just how it is. And uh, I talk a lot about the my same projects. Now, a lot of those, a lot of those videos have to do with uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum and Chainlink and Cardano, especially Cardano lately. So today, let's just jump in and talk about a little Bitcoin, shall we? So let's take a look at what we got. So first up, this was a pretty, I'm not going to play the video. Uh, it's, it's a good one. I'll link in the description. You can check it out. But uh, it's just fascinating to me that smart money is so reserved. But I mean, I guess I kind of get it because, you know, you have to understand in some of these smart money projects, they're, they're kind of like, look, we need to minimize our, our risk and uh, maximize our upside potential. So they're just kind of staying in the background going, what's going on? And I don't know how much more proof that they need. Uh, but if you've got a Tesla, you've got a mass mutual, you had the oldest United States bank, Mellon, getting into the fray where someone told me they have like trillions of assets under management. Pretty amazing. And they're going to start to embrace cryptocurrency so people can actually hold it. I don't know what you need, but uh, whatever. I'm not smart money. I'm dumb money. Last month, during a town hall meeting held for thousands of JP Morgan Chase traders and sales personals around the world, Global Markets head Tony Rarba, I think I nailed it, acknowledged a question that is increasingly being asked by the bank's own employees. When will they get involved in Bitcoin? Because, you know, it's only gone up 
oh, massively over the last year. We're looking at a 200% increase. Uh, so, you know, when are we going to do that? Or actually 300%. So, I mean, it is the only the best performing asset class over the decade. So maybe in 100 years, they'll get into it. I have no idea. To answer that question, Rarba, who had logged into the January 18, 17 Zoom call from his New York office, brought in his boss, JP Morgan co-president Daniel Pinto, according to people with knowledge of the meeting. Pinto signaled he was open-minded about Bitcoin, uh, but he declined to be identified when speaking about an internal event. So he's like, yeah, we're looking at Bitcoin, but that didn't happen. And... Then he states, if over time an asset class develops that is going to be used by different asset managers and investors, we will have to be involved, Pinto said in an interview. Demand, the dem this is hilarious. The demand isn't there yet, but I'm sure it'll be at some point. This is the same company, let me remind you, who said that uh, Bitcoin is a topped out and it wouldn't go above 40,000. What do you think they're doing in the background? They're probably just going, you know what, you suckers, we've been, we've been playing you guys for a long time. What we're going to do is we're going to just create FUD and we're going to bring this to the attention of everybody. And hopefully it'll drop and you'll sell like crazy and we'll buy it up as soon as we can get this right past the SEC because we're a public traded company. This is what I think about. It could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments section, but that's just how I see it. And this was a, well, before I go into this, this next part, uh, the gentleman here, um, who was this? Yusan, the guy on the right. He, he said that he had actually uh, interviewed Daniel, Daniel Pinto. And he said he's actually talked to him for multiple years about Bitcoin. He said every year was the same thing. He was kind of like just standoffish. He goes, but he said it was pretty amazing when I talked to him this year recently about Bitcoin. He seemed like he was more not so much on the fence, but really more going to get into it. So again, like when you see all these huge corporations and entities and institutions and hedge fund managers and everybody and their mother getting into it, the pensions, you got to think to yourself, like, I mean, how much more do you need? Anyhow, uh, to finish this up, JP Morgan traders, and this was interesting, JP Morgan traders aren't the only uh, ranks of crypto at big banks. Last week, Goldman Sachs hosted a private forum with Mike Novogratz, uh, co-founder, CEO, co-founder of Galaxy Digital for employees and clients. And Novogratz just went in there and just talked for like 90 minutes about what's going on. So look, uh, all these things that are happening right now, uh, you, you have, like I said, you have all this smart money coming in and going... You know, we think we're going to do it, but we're not for sure. We're not on the fence. It just seems very odd to me that they're this much on the fence as far as with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, especially with when you had Michael Saylor hosting that enormous event on February, was it third and fourth or second and third, right? All those corporations immediately after, or at least a couple of days after, you had Tesla uh, announce, hey, we're going to start buying up Bitcoin. And then everybody that's kind of in that whole uh, paradigm of what's going to happen. I think we're going to see a lot of big ones. I've heard rumors and rumblings, maybe Oracle. Apple, I'm not, I don't really think so, but whatever. But uh, Oracle. But there is this word. There is this word I really want to delve into. And we're going to go into this in detail tomorrow morning. This is from me, Kevin. Uh, again, I talked about this yesterday. And the word is indefinite lived intangible assets. And there is some documentation that I came across that was sent to me that um, from different uh, entities that um, this makes everything a no-brainer. I'll explain all that uh, tomorrow, but uh, that's, that's for a whole other video. Anyhow, let me just think of the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece, which is the uh, <laughs> Voyager Loyalty Program re relaunch. And uh, I was a part of this today. It was uh, me, CJ from Record Rebellion, and uh, Steve, the CEO of uh, Voyager. And we just talked about a couple of things. First, it wasn't just about the Voyager loyalty program. And in actuality, we talked about a lot of different things. First up, uh, we talked about, let me bring this. This was brought to my attention. I, I kind of just glanced over this, but there was uh, a Voyager raised 100 million by uh, private placement. So a lot of institutions, a lot of hedge fund managers, a lot of big players in the space that I can't tell you who it was, but it was a lot of people with a lot of money. We'll just say that. And when we were talking to Steve off camera, uh, he just says, hey, this is this is pretty big for us. And and now that I have this, you know, a, a new war chest of uh, different money, we can invest into the uh, more so in the infrastructure, even more than we've already done. So when I was thinking about this and I saw this, I was like, okay, Steve, that's great that they invest into that. And I asked them before camera and I asked them on camera and I will link this, this uh, interview at the, at the end. But I said, I'm worried because, you know, you have to understand, like, 
like Alex and CJ and of course Steve, they're all institution side, right? And I'm all I am just retail. I'm just like you. I just I don't have a ton of money. I just do my do my best. And I'm like, when I see a bunch of institutions coming in and they're investing into, oh, I mean, Bitcoin is one thing and they're going to put on their treasury and their and their uh, balance sheet. Sure, I'm good with that. But when I see a bunch of people come in and they're investing into VGX, into Voyager and what's going on, I'm like, what do you mean about that? It, is is for the, for us, is that going to be like a big rug pull at some point? They're going to invest into, well, first they're going to invest into Voyager, the company, the public traded company, but that's going to go a long way for, you know, uh, for VGX and the token. He goes, no, he goes, he goes, these guys, and you just watch the video. He's like, a lot of them come to me and go, you know what? We've got no short position. Uh, we've tried it. Didn't work out too hot for us. We don't have that. Um, that confidence to go around this round with you. So we are going to be in here for the long haul. And I asked him, what was the sentiment? I mean, how'd you feel about it? How, wh wh what'd you get from him? He goes, you know what? All these guys are solid. All these guys and gals are solid. And they really want to partner with us because they see the future. And he goes, and that's what we're really uh, impressed about. They brought in a lot of money. He goes, we had to stop. He goes, I'm sure we'll do another funding at some point. He goes, but uh, that's what we got. So to me, I'm like, that's great. If you got a lot of people who are, uh, again, smart money, hopefully smarter than JP Morgan. Uh, and they say, hey, we see wh where things are going. We want to be a part of this train. Uh, let's just game on. I'm down with that. So there was that part. The second thing that was asked was, of course, the waiting list. I know uh, if you're on the waiting list, uh, sorry, it is what it is, right? And uh, he broke down some numbers. He goes, look, we've got about 106 million. No, sorry, 106,000, 106 million, Jesus. 106,000 uh, funded accounts that were actively trading before everything went off with Wall Street bets, and uh, and then we got this massive influx of around two hundred fifty thousand in four days. He goes, we didn't see that coming. He goes, but now we see exactly where we're going, and and he's like, we're, we're gonna we're gonna upgrade, we're gonna do some infrastructure and things like that. And I was like, okay, Steve, that's great. You know, you're talking about infrastructure and doing these things. This is the same thing he told us last time. So I need specifics, man. And you got to tell me what, what's going on. Not that he owes me anything. I just asked the questions, right? And he goes, yeah, yeah. He goes, fair enough. He goes, to alleviate the problems, he goes, we brought in the team from Uber. Uber had the same type of issue. They had a massive scaling issue and they had to bring in some, some really uh, high tech, high, high speed individuals. And it was a big, massive team. He goes, we're bringing that same team in. And he said, what our goal is, is for 10 million users. 10 million users, 10 million users. He goes, so, you know, we have 106,000 funded right now. We got, you know, 240 that, that came in. He goes, but we see 10 million. Okay. So, uh, so we talked about that. I, I, sorry, I can't stress that enough. I mean, 10 million, uh, that's a ton. Like I, I think Robin Hood, we're thinking at uh, six, 8 million, somewhere around there. He's thinking about 10 million and he's talking about this year. That's pretty big. So what does that mean for the token? Well, First of all, uh, I asked him a question. I go, Steve, what about this ERC-20? Because your, your VGX token is it's an ERC-20. And right now, that's bad news. Not bad news, but it's, it, it's expensive. And I said, what, how about transferring it over to a Cardano or some other network? And he goes, you know what? He goes, we're thinking about that. He goes, we could do that. And now that we have $100 million, we have a lot of options to do it. He goes, but we're also looking at Algo because that's one of our partners. And uh, he goes, we might do one of those things. He goes, uh, it's up in the air right now. I was like, okay, great. So that was just that part. Pretty happy about that. Now let's get into the very next part, which I think is probably the, the more important one, which is the loyalty program, because that's what it really all comes around to. And if you haven't been around for why I talk about these loyalty program and tokenomics and utility, then I just have to ask you a question. What do you invest in and what does that token do? Like right now today, what does it actually do for you? You know, I, I don't know what you're invested into, like uh, tomato coin puts marinara on the block. I don't know what it is, but what does your token do? What is it doing? What are people building on it? And if you can't really answer that question, then it is a highly speculative asset, right? But if it's actually doing something that puts you out, you know, that, that much farther. I want to show you. So the question to me always is, why is Binance coin going up so much? It doesn't make any sense, right? What does it do? Is it a currency? Eh, not really. You know, what is it just, you know, for the, for the, the, uh, the exchange? Well, here's the thing. Uh, Binance coin has gone up uh, amazingly uh, in the last, well, let's just take, let's just take seven days, 
14 days has been up 200% in two weeks, 200%. 30 days, 253, and a year, 424. Why has that happened? It's because of utility. Utility and what it does. So if you own a bunch of, or just you, don't, you, you own BNB coin, right? And we, t- we covered this a couple of days ago. I'm not going to beat this down to the pulp. But you can save on fees. You can stake it. You get a, a good interest rate. You've, um, what else is there? There's launch pools. So the more you have, the, the more that the, the newer type of crypto that comes out, you can actually uh, get pieces of that. Uh, lock staking, DeFi staking, um, rewards just for the amount of Binance coin that you have. And then for Binance, let me see here. I forgot the market cap. I don't care. Circulating supply uh, is 147 and the max supply is 179, 179 million. So again, the more that is locked up, uh, the more that if, if you take a lot of it off the market and there's still the same demand, what does that mean? That means the price goes up, right? Because everybody wants Binance coin because they want to lower their fees. Everything we just talked about. So that's a utility. And that's what we're talking about. And that's what we talked about. Uh, actually, let me see if I can pull this. When I talked about the whole value proposition for, for Voyager, and we talked about this in depth. You can watch the video. I'll link it at some point somewhere. <laughs> But it, it's just where I, my price fiction, why I think it's going to 29 cents to 30. Mind you, that 29 cents was on January 7th, and we're at 350 right now, somewhere around. So it all comes down to the utility, right? What is it being? The tokenomics, Metcalf's law, the more connections that you have, the network effect, blah, 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 right? Okay, got you. So the more people we have, the better off we are. So what are those, what makes Voyager have that tokenomics? And why is it so, why am I so excited about it? Well, it's because the Voyager loyalty program that Steve talked about today. So this was the old one, okay? This is not the one that we're talking about, but I want to compare it to what he told us it would be. And this this new one was going to come out in like the next 30 days, I think he said, 30 to 45, I forgot. So there's three tiers in the old one, there's three tiers in the new one. And the problem with this one is like, people were like, well, hold on, if the different rewards, it's only 25 Voyager tokens or 50 or 100. What does that do? Because it doesn't really lock things up. It's not like that's a ton to lock up. So who cares, right? If we need a, a lot of these to be locked up, just like you know other places, I suppose. And the more that you lock up, again, uh, the better off your debit card fees, referral bonus rewards, withdrawal fee savings, interest booster, all that stuff will do, which is good, you know. But it really doesn't do much for the value of the token. It's it's okay for everything else. So Steve listened to the team to everybody, and he brought it back to his team, excuse me, and he said, this is what he said. So let us bring this out. So first of all, these numbers are going to change drastically. And he said, right now, preliminary, it's going to be for the first level, it's 500 Voyager tokens. Next level is going to be 5,000, and the third and top tier is going to be 20,000. That's a lot of tokens. So some people are like, well, dang it, now I can't get into uh, into this tier. I want them lower. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. So if you want this to be locked up, this is what it's going to have to be. And uh, so another thing is this. There is no free rides. So, I mean, my whole portfolio has taken me years to accumulate. Dollar cost averaging. And sometimes it sucks because you just see everything go down. Sometimes it's good. But over the last two and a half years, it was pretty awful, right? We, we all went through 2018, 2019. And here we are in 2020 and 21. So it's pretty tough to go through all these things. There is, again, there is no pleasure without a little bit of pain. And this is where we're at. So when people talk about, oh, now I can't get to it. Well, just start investing. Dollar cost averaging or value cost averaging. It's up to you. Uh, that's just how it goes. So then, so we talked about that. Uh, I talked to him about there's going to be a potential uh, crypto to stock option. So you're going to be able to take, uh, and, he, and he verified it. We're, it's in the pipeline. We're going to do it. You're going to be able to take crypto, like a Bitcoin and exchange it, swap it out for a Tesla stock, just like that. And then of course, the more Voyager tokens you have, the less the fees are and so on and so forth. So that's good. And then, so my big thing was, well, what's, can we stake it? And he said, yeah, we can stake it at 7%. And I go, well, that's that's great, but then that's going to be inflationary because we're just going to keep, you know, building up more more tokens. And he goes, oh no, no. He goes, we're also going to be burning everything that, that we take back as far as fees and Voyager. We'll be burning twenty five percent. He said, I don't know if it's going to be monthly or quarterly, but we're going to burn tokens so we can keep it deflationary. Like, great, that sounds good to me. 
Then he, then he talks about the debit and credit cards, uh, which didn't really give too many details about that, but I would assume the more Voyager tokens that you have, the more cashback rewards you get. Also more on savings on, on withdrawals, uh, even more so. And I will say this, I, I did talk to Steve because there was a complaint about, hey, you've got the to, to withdraw ADA Cardano at 20. And then he listened to everybody and he dropped it. So that was good. It's still a little bit high on some points, I will admit, but uh, that is what it is. So savings on withdrawals. And somebody said, well, who cares? Because Celsius doesn't charge us anything to, to withdraw uh, you know, cryptocurrency. True, they don't. But you want to buy some crypto on Celsius? Good luck. It's like 3.5%. And, percent. and uh, you can do that all day long. I'm not uh, big into that, but uh, I like Celsius. I own Celsius. I got a lot of, not a lot. I got 15% of my portfolio in Celsius and I'm gaining yield. I think it's great for that, but I'm not going to buy crypto on it. And then they talked about BIP or uh, basic pricing or uh, base points. So like whatever you actually, so he talks about Voyager is a broker. They will find the best price for you in exchange, depending. It's not always going to be the fantastic great price, but it's pretty good so far. I can tell you it's way better than Coinbase. And then on top of that, depending on your level, you're also going to get uh, base points back for whatever you spent. So the more you trade, the more you actually get back. And then, um, oh, the uh, 106,000 funded accounts. So I think uh, just take a look at this real quick and just think to yourself, how does this compare with with a Binance, with another type of uh, a token like a Swiss Borg or something like that? Do you think that this token could compete with uh, a Binance token and what it does? And do you think it'll stay at $3.48 for 2021? Let me just think of the comment section. And uh, that is essentially it for that piece. And then lastly, I want to finish up, talk to you about uh, Polkadot. So Polkadot, I just, I just, I don't really want to get into the whole uh, minutia of this one. It's just, again, talking about utility, the more things that are built on a chain, the better off it is. And these are the things that we're working, that we uh, like to see. Cardano, a lot of people give me grief about that. They're like, well, 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 what's being built on Cardano? Things, I don't know. I mean, they did sign a bunch of different contracts. There's things getting on the pipe. There's an ERC-20 converter and all these. But yeah, we'd like to see some more, some more action on Cardano. I think it's coming. And that's why I invested heavily into it on top of the fact but we've also got a stake pool, which you can find in the link below. That just says DNU stake pool. Check that out. And uh, so I just want to pull this and just show you that there are projects being built on Polkadot. This is just one of the many. And I think Polkadot is going to be a pretty big one. I'm not going to delve into it. Uh, but I will say this real quick over at iTrust. Uh, iTrust uh, Crypto IRA, which is the one that I have. I've been, uh, I've been with them for nine months, 10 months, something like that. So they just offered uh, Polkadot, and you can put that into your crypto IRA. Uh, there's a video about that, and you can find all the information. I like the IRA because this is the thing. Um, they're going to offer Polkadot that you can put in your IRA, but all, and also they have Ethereum, and they have gold, and they have silver, and they have Bitcoin, all that good stuff, right? But what's cool about them, and I think it's going to be bigger that people are not talking about, is that you're going to be able to stake Polkadot and stake Ethereum and then the gains that you make from that, from that staking, from the rewards, you want to pay taxes on those. So if you are thinking about, wow, should I really do this? Um, that's just, that's up to you, uh, really. Uh, I have it so far and it uh, works out pretty good. I will just say this, where is it? If you're looking for the links, first of all, here's the Dan Stake Pool. Uh, down here, if you want to learn about uh, iTrust, uh, there's a video I, I made about 20 minutes or so explains why I have a crypto IRA, what I invested into, what are the whole uh, options, how it can totally minimize taxes. And uh, there's a uh, one month free with link. And uh, that is it. So uh, that's it for today. Look, I know there's a lot of information, but uh, there's some amazing things happening. And you know what's crazy? It's only February. I feel like we've, we've got at least until the end of December, if the if the four-year cycles are correct. And some people are always even thinking about uh, June 2022, uh, we will extend this bull run. That's for another video, but that's all. Anyhow, if you made it to the end, I want to say thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. That really helped me out. Also consider subscribing because a lot of these things we talk about, 
they're pretty time sensitive. And uh, that is it. I will link those two videos on the left and right. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.